Howard Jones is a musician, singer and songwriter who's had 10 top 40 hits in the UK, six of which reached the top 10, including What Is Love, New Song and Things Can Only Get Better. And this October, the Howard Jones Acoustic Trio are embarking on a 13-date UK tour at the Bath Forum, which will showcase an intimate, stripped-down trip through Howard's colourful 30-year music career. And he's with us here just now. Good afternoon. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fine as well, thank you. So what kind of songs are you going to be performing on the tour? Is it the classics with an acoustic twist? Yeah, yes, it'll be that. Um, I I, uh, also will, you know, play stuff from the you know the 40 nearly 40 years career you know that there's yeah. a lot of albums a lot of songs and also some some new things as well from the new album that's out now mm-hmm. and uh the last album transform so yeah so you know i think that people would be really annoyed with me if i didn't play um the you know the there's well thank you for calling them classics but yeah. um you know the songs that people know um but but i think you know my my, my wonderful um super fans you know who've been following me for 40 years would, would like to hear a few surprises in the set as well and and also some new things so you know i'm trying to please everyone really and it's not always easy do you find that your songs work quite well when they're done in an acoustic way yeah yes yeah they um you know i choose ones that 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 do work in that way yeah um and i mean most of the hits do and that's fine sometimes it, it, we, we we'll give them a different groove for the um for the acoustic show um but yeah they've they've because a lot of them were written at, you know at the piano so it kind of translates well to to the acoustic treatment maybe you wouldn't expect them to work well because you maybe you can't imagine them i suppose because they are keyboardy and synthy songs but it ends up working quite well doesn't it yeah yeah i think you know when you when you strip it back down to the core of the song Hmm. um, and the chord shapes and and all that you know most of them work, will work fine. Yeah. Um, and and even songs that I thought I thought wouldn't work. There's a song on Dream Into Action called Specialty that that I thought oh this will never work acoustically. And we tried it the three of us and it, it it and it worked really well. It's very different to the original recording on Dream Into Action, but it it worked very well. So there's um. It's pro- you know I've found that it's probably worth giving them all a try to see see what comes out well you know yeah. and what gave you the idea to create an acoustic trio? My friends Nick Beggs is on bass and yeah. um, Robin Bolt is on on guitar and I I've known them both for about thirty five years and they're really really good friends of mine and we've you know we've travelled the world together we've been through our ups and downs. Uh, with our, you know, our personal lives, and we, we, we've, we, we're like brothers, to be honest. Mm. It, it really is that kind of thing. We've, we've grown up together, and so when we, when we go on tour, it's always very, very, very enjoyable. And then at the end of the evening, you know, we get to play music together. So um, mm. I can't think of of a more um, happy band really when I'm when I'm working with with them. Yeah. Uh, and of course, they're such brilliant musicians that mm. if I decide to do something new or go or take the song in a different direction they're just with me solid as a rock and it's just um it's just a pleasure and of course they're actually quite prolific musicians in their own right aren't they robin bolt and nick beggs because they've performed with some of the greats already yes that's right yeah that's right definitely um yeah they 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 they've got a great heritage of 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 um of working with um amazing musicians and mm. and of course you know nick um had his own band kajagoogoo that came out in the 80s and yeah um i decided that we, we we must do one of one of nick's songs as well so we do mm. a kind of slightly jazzy version of of too shy which which nice. works really well and i get i get to sing it so yeah so that's a bit of a highlight in the show yeah I think that's a crowd favourite as well, Too Shy, because I don't want to show off, but I did see Lamal do it recently, and the crowd really love that song. So is it the same at your shows? It goes down in an absolute storm, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Everyone knows it, and and it's so great to have Nick, you know, playing the bass solo in it, you know, which is yeah. just one of the best bits about that record, yeah. Yeah. What is the main reason that you decided to do it as an acoustic trio as opposed to performing your songs as they are on the record? 
Well, you know, I do. I, I, we've just done six weeks, um, t- you know, um, tour of America with with my full electronic band. You know, so mm. so I I like to run the two things in in parallel. Mm. So you know, there's the there's one side of my of my work that is the full on electronic stuff, and then um, and then I like to go out and be m- more of a songwriter and and tell stories and you know give people a bit of the background to the to the songwriting with the acoustic show. So I like to run the two in parallel because it just keeps it interesting for me and I, then I get yeah. to play you know more songs from the from from the catalogue that I've written you know and it, um, which is keeps everything moving forward Is it easier to perform songs acoustically? <laughs> um I think it's harder actually because mm. everything is much more under the under the spotlight. So obviously the singing and the playing, um, it's more of a risky uh, thing. I, 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 but in terms of enjoyment, I think if I had to choose, I would do the acoustic show <laughs> because um, it's just different every night and it's really fun and uh, and you know the audiences always always kind of give you a new you know a new story to tell and um yeah i think yeah i mean i i, I enjoyed both of them but really but i mean yeah. if i had to choose i probably would do the acoustic shows yeah are there any venues on this tour coming up that you're particularly excited about playing at no i mean i i i like they're all they're all really nice theaters so yeah. so um that was one of the things that I said, you know, what I wanted to do, you know, it's, it's important that it's a nice environment for the, for the fans to go to yeah. um, and, and that they feel comfortable and can really sort of sit back and, and, and just, you know, listen carefully to the, to the songs and, you know, it's completely different to the electric show, which is everyone's, you know, up and dancing and, and, yeah. and there's, but this is more kind of intimate affair where, where people can reflect on the songs and just absorb the music, you know. So, um, yeah, so it needs to be in a nice environment. And I think we've chosen really good theatres for it. Do you find that there's maybe more an appreciation for the songs at the acoustic gigs? Maybe they appreciate the songwriting a bit more? Yeah, I think it. You know, it does. It it does focus on the songs. Uh, when yeah. you know, when you strip them back and give them a slightly different treatment, um, it 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 does. It does. It does. Show, you know, I would. You know, if I had, you know say you know what I like to do most, and that, you know, I'm a I'm a songwriter, and yeah. at the end of the day, uh, I may use electronics sometimes. I may use acoustic instruments sometimes, but at at the core of it is are the songs that hopefully, you know, other people can play and sing as well, you know, and that I think that sort of highlights it really. Yeah. In what way do you think the way you do shows now compares to how you did them back in the day? I suppose this tour is obviously different because it's acoustic, but are there other ways in terms of technology and things that have changed? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the early days, you know, when I started out as a one-man electronic band, um, you know, the equipment was very unreliable and mm. it would it would break down a lot. So there would be that anxiety always about about the equipment working. And yeah. you know, when you're pi- pioneering a new way of doing things, you will run into problems. And sometimes it can be really embarrassing. And as the years have gone by, you know, the, and the equipment has got more reliable, and the computers have come in, and you know. I, I, unless you you're doing a gig outside and it's forty degrees, um, mm-hmm. they, it, what what's different is that I'm less anxious about performing altogether, mm-hmm. um, and I can concentrate on the singing and you know working with the audience and not having to worry about pieces of gear breaking down. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, you know the quality of everything has improved now. You know the sound up front. You know we can get much better sound, and you know. Um, yeah, so so it's 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 really moved moved forward. But I, I guess you know, in the old days, it was very exciting. You know, when yeah. things broke down and you had to recover it and you had to get it fixed, and it was yeah. you know, um, the audience kind of likes that drama, really. And maybe now it's all got a bit mm. too safe. Yeah, I suppose in the last couple of years, there's been a little bit of uncertainty with COVID and things, and hopefully we're sort of out of it now. Yeah. Is that? you know a justified comparison to that uncertainty or not really it's more to do like the, the, the american tour we did we had three people go down with covid and mm. you know we're all traveling on a on a tour bus together so obviously they can't be on the bus 
they have to be in a hotel and there's loads more work for everyone and so, and yeah. you know the band uh, you know had to had to muck in with setting up gear and all that stuff so um i think yeah it's a new kind of anxiety because it's to do with personnel you know and people mm. getting ill and loads of bands have been having to cancel tours because you know two or three members of the band have gone down with it and um, luckily, we were able to, you know, complete the the tour and we delivered all the shows. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's it's a new kind of anxiety now that's coming, and I think COVID is probably going to be with us for a long time, and it's going to affect, um, you know, music shows a lot. Now, on this tour, your special guest is Roxanne De Bastian. How did you find her? I've known Roxanne from, probably for about four or five years now because she mm. um, is one of the directors of the FAC, um, which is is the Featured Artist Coalition that I'm I'm a director of also. And so I've got to work with her and, 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 and meet her um, a lot over the last four years. And I, I'd really like to have a connection with the people that, that come on tour with us. And she would regularly send me, you know, her, her new work and, and new albums. I really have always really enjoyed it. Um, and we did a gig up in London at the Union Chapel and I invited her to, to, you know, to open up for us. And she went down a storm with, with my audience. They absolutely loved her. And I thought, oh, it'd be so great to have her on this tour as well. So, yeah, very excited to welcome Roxanne on the tour. Brilliant. Yeah. Now, what was it that first got you hooked on music? Music's always been part of my family because um, my, my parents were both Welsh, so they both sang and their parents both sang and um, their brothers and sisters played instruments. So the whole, you know, Welsh culture is very immersed in, in song and and music. So from a very young age, you know, I, I, my, I had my parents singing, I had relatives playing the piano um and so music's just always been part of my life and so i've got three brothers and we used to do harmony singing as well and we used to do little shows for our relatives when we went to visit and yeah. it's just a kind of part of my my life it's always been there you know it wasn't really any moment when it suddenly arrived it, it was um it's just part of the culture of our family to have music you know and and to make music ourselves so yeah very fortunate to have that did you have any particular early influences well my mother was always listening to the radio so a lot of the music that i heard when i was very young was 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 coming from from the bbc mm. um the home service and you know the beatles and the stones and the tremolos and Freddie and the Dreamers and uh, all of those great 60s bands and my dad gave me a, a, um, a transistor radio when I was 11 and I used to listen to pirate radio um, late into the night when I should have been asleep and so I was hearing all that I mean we, we, we never had uh, we couldn't afford record players and stuff like that so I, I had to wait till I was like 14 before I got my own tiny little record player um, yeah. but really I you know and I, I was having piano lessons since I was seven so I was learning classical music and uh, learn you know hearing all, all that and then hearing all pop music the whole time so I was getting music really from every every direction yeah. so um, I anything that sounded good to me I think has been has been an influence in my life uh, as a musician yeah do you think that sort of classical influence gives you a deeper appreciation than most musicians? I wouldn't say that. I'd say, um, it. I mean, playing, learning to play the, the, the classical pieces gives you great sort of skill and facility um, at, yeah. at your instrument and probably broadens your idea of, you know, the range of, of harmony that you can use and, and rhythm and all that stuff. But you know, making great music, I don't think you have to, to have studied classical music or be influenced by it. it it's something that's in, in you, that you, it's in your, in your head. And if you're lucky enough to have an instrument that you can play to get it out of there. But, um, you know, I don't have any, you know, some of the greatest musicians of all time were, n were never, never could read music or mm. were classically trained. And, and, 
it's like whatever you know whatever um that creativity is, is 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 inside people's heads and they will find a way to get it out um it doesn't have to be that you've followed any sort of formal training yeah your first single was quite a big hit would you say you were prepared for that no no i, I don't think anybody could be prepared for that um yeah. I, I, I mean, I thought it was a good song. And when I played it to my, my little tiny audiences, when I was playing pubs and clubs, you know, around High Wycombe and London, mm. um, I thought, oh, you know, this this could do well, this song, because um, the fans seem to be really liking it. Um, but I don't think anybody, anything can prepare you for, uh, you know, suddenly being recognised everywhere and p- yeah. people chasing you, you know, down the street. Um, uh, it, it it, it's it's quite a, I mean I was lucky that the people who helped me with my music you know people did sound with me and helped me with the gear and did my lighting and and Jed who was the you know the dancer on stage all, all these people I'd grown up with and helped me keep my feet on the ground you know they keep helped me stay because they knew where I came from you know I was working in a factory and you know, same people who w- were working with me when I played the Nags Head High, High, High Wickham mm. also did the uh, Madison Square Garden in, in New York, you know, a few years later. So so that w- was a crucial thing for me as having friends around you that um, know where you came from. Now, of course, the Acoustic Trio Tour is happening in October. Is there anything else coming up after that or, you know, anything in the future after today? Yeah, well, we've got... We've got um, a, a, a European tour later on in the uh, in November. We, we're touring Germany and Sweden and Denmark. So um, that's with the electronic band, though. That's with the full band. Um, and then next year, 2023, is my 40th anniversary of the release of that single, new song. And mm-hmm. so we're planning something spectacular for, for that later on in the year. So, yeah, so it'll all be um, lots of action coming up. Yeah, absolutely. And let's just look at a few dates for the tour here. It all starts on Friday the 14th of October at the Bath Forum, then on to Basingstoke, Bury St Edmunds, Cheltenham, Birmingham, St Albans, Colchester, Peterborough, Borough, Buxton, Newcastle, Harrogate, Edinburgh and finishing in New Brighton on Sunday the 30th of October. You know, it's quite a relatively short tour, isn't it? But it still manages to fit in somewhere that's close to everybody. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, yeah, I I, I hope people can make it to... uh one show or, or, or the other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And tickets are available at thegigcartel.com. So many thanks for joining us today. It's been great to chat to you. Thank you very much, Toby. All the best to you.